Welcome back to Living the Quest. I'm your host, Shannon Valenzuela, and today I'm pleased to introduce my special guest, Immaculate Ilabagiza. She was a survivor of the Rwandan genocide, she's a public speaker, and the author of the book, Left to Tell. I hope you enjoy her inspiring story of faith, hope, and survival. It's so lovely to be here today with Immaculate Ilibagisa, and I, I just can't wait to talk to you about living our purpose with courage, which is what um, our, our series, The Quest, is kind of all about. And maybe we could start with the first lesson uh, when you were talking in the retreat last night that you, you said you had learned from your time mm -hmm. um, in hiding was love. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really the message that, that we uh, feel so strongly is is part of living our purpose with courage, and I wonder if you could maybe speak a little bit about that. How is love so important for courage in, yeah. in this life? You know, love it, it to me it felt so simple, but so strong. So when I, and it, it takes courage in a very disguised way mm -hmm. to really actually stand up for love in times when there is you know not much love being shown. And also to live with love in times when there's peace so that we're not looking for something extraordinary, just like to really act every day with love. So when I was going through the genocide, I had this question that was just burning me with so much pain that was going, you know, was, uh, I was feeling. So many terrible things were happening. People were being murdered, really tortured really for, for what God created them to be. And I remember thinking like, what went wrong that this can happen? And I just almost wanted to have an answer. You just can't tell me that, oh, it's because of different tribes. These wars have happened in different countries, genocides. Mm -hmm. People have hated each other for different reasons, for their heights, for their religion, differences, for their color of the hair, or tribes, race. And there have been so many reasons people hate each other, each other but there's always the result of hate is hurting each other is messing up peace, there's no peace. So whatever reason, the result of hate is the same, destruction, mm -hmm. no peace, just like a turmoil. So I wanted to know, then what is at the basis of that hatred? Because it's not about tribes. There are many people who understand each other with different tribes. What is it? And I really felt that in my heart, like the only answer I can come up with, people failed to love one another. And when people fail to love one another, there is hatred between people, their family break down, you know, our friends break down, you construct schools break down, a genocide break, you know, come up, like what was happening in our country. Then I remember asking myself then, what is my part? Because I realized that I can only really change who I am. I can only change myself. I can only make decisions that concerns me. What is my part then? And I felt like as if God was speaking in my heart, just make a decision to love whatever decision, whatever place you are, whatever moment you're going through, including the time when I was in that bathroom. This time I was with seven other women in a bathroom of three by four feet. For somebody to go even to the toilet, you have to move. You can refuse and do it angrily, or you can really bend just to give them space. You can look away, or you can try to embarrass them by looking at them. So even that time, every moment I still have to choose love. With the plate the man was bringing us to eat, there's a little food for eight people on one plate. Either I can grab quickly so I can feed myself or I can think about others too. So I felt that it's not something so far away, but it is something so simple that we must practice every day. I have to choose. So it takes courage and humility in some ways to love when maybe there is a other attraction mm -hmm. because you realize that the answer is love but you can't change other people you have only can yeah. change you so i'm going to decide and then i thought you know suppose everyone will make that decision to be loving people wherever they are a president the decision they're making to lead a country a mayor a governor a mother a father wow the world will be a perfect place <laughs> you know, with such a simple thing that doesn't cost any money, just takes courage. And you realize that sometimes it's easy to show love, but other times it really takes actually courage. 
It means that you are risking for people not to like you if you're not of their same mind, mm -hmm. you know, to speak what you believe to be truth, and yet other people maybe don't, don't approve. And you realize that it's courageous. I still remember one time in my school with kids, and one girl, I remember just calling everyone to laugh at one girl who was coming in. And this, have, by the way, have really hurt me all ma most of my life. I'm like, oh, I thought about that. I thought I was so wrong. We were young. But one girl is like, oh, somebody's going to come in. When she comes in, let's laugh. Mm -hmm. And then all the kids laughed. And we didn't understand what it was about. And when the girl went up, it ate me so bad. Yeah. I realized that we actually caused pain to this person. And I spent the rest of the year just trying to be her friend. Mm -hmm. Because I realized that what was done was so terrible. It takes courage to ask a question, to do what you believe is right, and to love even when the whole group is not loving. So it takes courage, but it also takes humility. It, it is actually simple, but it's also big and small. But love, like Mother Teresa said, do little things with great love. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah, that's so beautiful. And I, I think it's, it's wonderful you say that it is, it is both the most simple thing and the most necessary thing, yes. right? And so and it's, yeah. And when love is lacking and a genocide happened, that's when you really realize the importance mm -hmm. of love. Yeah. Because we have just banalized that word so much, you know? We love everything, mm -hmm. you know, in ways, even when we don't really care much, you know, things and love of people and everything, really. It's so important. I mean, when you mm -hmm. see a genocide, the roads were filled with their bodies. And again, coming to my own quest of asking myself what went wrong, mm -hmm. love was, we failed to love one another. We lacked love, that's why that happened. Mm -hmm. And if only we can love, that will not happen. So it comes back to that basic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's an amazing, um, just an amazing message, I think, uh, mm -hmm. to encourage people to, to just do the small things with great love, as you say, Mother mm -hmm. Teresa said. Um, and I wonder if maybe we can we can go from there to talking a little bit about God who is love, right? Oh. And so your your beautiful story yesterday about how you know once you had sort of made the uh, come to believe you know that God exists from from the, the miraculous when they left the door alone and and that moment, um, but then you said that you were you were trying to learn who God is then by reading the scriptures and reading the mm -hmm. stories of who who God is and so I wonder if if maybe you could just speak a little bit about how important it is not just that we that we believe God exists but that we actually come into a relationship with God and we start to know who he is um, yeah. and and to love him in that way it's true you know God has a personality God is who he is and to, to love God, when you realize that His love, His one who runs the world, and I, want, I wanted to follow Him because I feel like anything I have said, I have read, I have thought about, I, I see in the Bible, is the right thing. And if we have, in the first place, followed Him, a genocide will not happen. Divisions and the hatred between people will not happen. So I remember just deciding first for God. I am deciding to follow God, and I'm going to seek Him. And I remember telling him, well, I will seek you until maybe you prove me wrong. Yeah. But so far, there's nothing I've seen that you said to, to believe and to behave like that is bad. So I'm going to believe you. I just want to know now, what should I believe and who you are? So when you, you believe in God, when you choose him, you really you say, I, I decide to follow you. Because, um, again, maybe somebody introduced you to him, told you about him, and you decided him. Your heart is still open to continue to learn about who he is. He has a personality. I have seen people who, hate, who don't like God because they said their father wasn't good. Mm -hmm. So for the per for in their perspective, they compare their biological father with God. Mm -hmm. But God is not that person. It's not just an idea of what a father should be. But actually, he described the, the disciples, you know, apostles of our Lord, they, and the, who, the uh, prophets who wrote the Bible. We see they speak to us about God. So I wanted to learn God. I don't know how I want him to be, mm -hmm. but I wanted to submit myself to learn this new person. We all have friends, but we can't hate every friendship because mm -hmm. somebody have hurt us. Mm -hmm. So you realize that even among our siblings, they are different. They have different personality. So I wanted to learn about God. 
it was such a beautiful journey. Yeah. And to love somebody is to really to learn to know them. Mm -hmm. All of us, when we fell in love, you know, with our, you know, our loved ones, our husbands, we wanted to know. So, what music do you like? <laughs> or what do you, which books do you like to read? So, what do you do with your free time? So, what are your parents are the names? How many children, you know, your siblings you have? Because you, when you love somebody, you you have to try to know who they are. Mm -hmm. So, and when you fall in love with God, when you fall in love with God, you want to know who He is. Even when you try to fall in love with Him, when you realize that He how important He is, then you find out who He is. So, learning Him, it really made me fall in love with Him. I realize how much love He has, and how much power He has. You know what comes to mind just now, even now, which I thought about all this during the genocide. That's the story of Jonah, mm. you know, who, how the tenacity of God is like he <laughs> chose somebody. Yeah. And even when the person is being possible, <laughs> he's like, no, you're going to go there, I'm going to take you. And what I, what I loved in that story of Jonah, he was in, in the belly of the fish and the fish threw him out. <laughs> and he doesn't want to save the, <laughs> the people in the uh, Nineveh. I don't remember how you say it exactly. N Nineveh. Yeah, yeah, Nineveh, yeah. And he doesn't want to save them. He has a message that can help them. <laughs> But what I love is that at the end, God was like, you know, when he destroyed the tree mm -hmm. with a little ant, uh, this little thing, an animal, how do you call it? Not an insect, it was an insect. It was a little thing that like ate the animal, ate the tree that was giving him a shade, you know, yeah. Jonah. Yeah. And then he dies and he's mad and he wants to die <laughs> because of that. Yeah. And then God is like, Can I, you, 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 you have compassion on this tree you didn't even plant. Yeah. Why did you destroy that tree? <laughs> and you don't want me to have compassion on my people? You know, no matter how much mm -hmm. bad things they have done, you know, I'm asking you to go. He's actually asking, like, can't you see that I needed to have that compassion towards my people? He doesn't need our permission. <laughs> he didn't need Jonah's permission to save people, but he still know his anger, how maybe mm -hmm. he was hurt. He didn't like them, whatever reason. He's really good, and they still want to work with him. You know, you, you see Moses, he couldn't talk, which I, by the way, I love Moses, because when he said, like, look, I stutter, I, can't, I don't even talk well, how can I be the one who is going to lead you people out? Mm -hmm. And when I think about it myself, I'm like, I'm from Rwanda. When I was writing the book Left to Tell, I'm like, who will read it? How can I speak to people? I don't mm. even know English. How am I going to speak? And you realize that day by day, he's just like, just go. Say what is in your heart, what you have learned. In your poor English, broken English, but I want you to go and share. And what he did to Moses, he didn't say like, no, let me choose, you're right, let me choose someone mm -hmm. who speak better. <laughs> He's like, I will give you helper, you just go. Yeah. You know. So again, when I said this, not to feel in any way, in a special way, in any way in my life, which we are all special, mm -hmm. but all of us were called for a certain mission. And if we really think about it, we are inadequate. We are human beings who fall, who hurt God in our sin, with our sins. And uh, what do we know? You think you know one thing, then you realize you don't know so much. Mm -hmm. So learning the personality of God when he saved Daniel in the den of lions. And I'm like, oh, you can do that? <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. So I wanted to learn him. Uh, when I learned about John, Job, the suffering he went through, and I'm like, I'm trying to find out a way Job is going to say, you know, enough is enough. I'm done with <laughs> yeah. God. But he actually kept loving him. And then to see also God who is seeing him, his, all the pain, he still love him. Mm -hmm. What is he going to do in his life? And actually, after he restored his life and give him so much more. But that also showed me suffering is not a sign that God hates you. Mm -hmm. You know, actually it's a part that you need to call upon him. Ask him for explanation, not ex to explain himself, but ask him, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. How can this be? Where are you? It's okay to cry to him, but don't reject him. Mm -hmm. So that what I was learning in the bathroom, I'm like, no, I still look at how he have dealt with other people. So I am learning this God. And that was so good. Then to send his, his son, his, to send Jesus again, take it from the Bible, that mm -hmm. what happened in this truth. If you believe in him, then you better believe everything. You yeah. know, and then he sent his son to die for us, to carry the cross. He had done no sin, and he had to go through that. I mean, and to watch Mother Mary, yeah. also to be beside her, her son and up to the cross. So who, why should I think 
that I should not go through any suffering. Mm -hmm. So all the things like that, that what was, was changing my mind, knowing God, because I can't create my own God. And I can't invent my own way of living, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And actually I realized whenever I submitted to God's ways, learning who he is, his personality, everything made sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the time, I, until after the genocide, there's one time somebody told me, uh, I was really in pain and I went to see this priest who was also a psychologist. So I thought, you know, I thought psychologists are just going to hit you and take away all the pain and <laughs> all of a sudden you are all good. <laughs> so he heard me, my story, that tell me what will happen exactly. I told him everything. I'm crying. I'm crying because now I know somebody understands, mm -hmm. you know, he has skills. I'm crying to him. And after I finished, he was like, you know, you are actually not broken. You are good. I'm like, what? Uh -huh. Don't you see? <laughs> what yeah. do you mean? I'm not, I'm okay. I'm good. And so don't you see, like, no, you are not as broken as many kids here who have gone through so much as you went through. Mm. And then he said, however, you are suffering from the lack of affection of your family. Mm. And that can hurt you as much as anything else. And he said, but in God's infinite love, he knows how to give back that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what do you mean? You can get that back love, that love back of your family, that affection. How? He said, well, this is what you do. Go to orphanage, orphanages. Find the kids who need, who have no parents. Love them. Be that parent. Love them as if they were yours. But hug them without like, oh, you know, you are too dirty. Mm -hmm. Go clean them. Hug them. Clean them. Whenever they are dirty, feed them. You know, buy them clothes that you wish like your mom would buy for you. Like, give them the best of mm -hmm. your affection, but also material, whatever you bring them. So I found my home to Mother Teresa Orphanage. Oh, wow. And I will go there just to see how I will feel after. Yeah, but he said, yeah. you feel my heart. Yeah. And I will go to them. And he told me, go to the sick people, especially mostly to those who have no one who bring them food, yeah. who have no one to visit. Concentrate on them more. Bring them the food you wish your mom, your dad to give them, mm -hmm. to, give the, to give you. So you give it to them. When you buy them clothes, buy them the nice one. When you, you go to take care of the homeless, so give them the best. Don't give them the, the last yeah, one you didn't yeah. need. I give them the best. I'm like, okay. So I remember I started to go to the orphanage of Mother Teresa. So these kids, I really gave myself as if like I would wish my mom to love me that way or my dad. I would sit down, one will sit here, and another one will go to my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> and then one would be hugging me, they were fighting, one put my leg on one on here. I'm like, okay, fine, you come here, sit. And I would just like hug them. You know, whenever I saw their nose were not clean, I cleaned them. The yeah. same way my mom will clean me. Yeah. You know, their hair, let's take a soap, you know, let's yeah. wash them. And I did all that. We sang, we danced. And I really went home like, wow, my heart is filled. Wow. I felt like I have met my mom and dad. So the priest was really right. Yeah. He, the love filled me. Then I went back to the Bible. It's what Jesus says. Love the poor. Mm -hmm. Take care of the poorest among you. Even if he didn't say, then your heart will be filled with the same love. Mm -hmm. But we just need to be blindly follow what he says. Mm -hmm. Love, be honest, be good, follow his commandments, and then good will be done to you. Mm -hmm. Don't even ask yourself, how is it going to be done? Because mm -hmm. we, we like to, yeah, to have we the like whole <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like to know. things, yeah. Yeah, to know the yeah, whole yeah. control. <laughs> then when I do that, and then we do, you spread the good news of God. God will take care of you. I really have seen it, yeah. 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 Oh, that's, that's such a beautiful story. And the idea that you can, you can actually um, find love by giving love by giving. is an amazing, it, it almost feels like it shouldn't be true that way, because, but, but, but it is, right? But it, it is. is true. Um, and most of that, you only experience them by experience. Mm -hmm. It g doesn't make sense. Yes, like, yes. You mean I'm going to take away my time? just to yeah. go to dance with the kids at orphanage. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, my time is running. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. it, it's good to feel me. Well, sometimes people end up in therapy for years. Mm -hmm. Maybe what they could have get yeah. got by just giving love to yeah. those around them. Yeah. That time, you know, yeah. and then you end up in a pla bad place mm -hmm. or losing so much more because maybe you were in pain, you didn't even realize it. Mm -hmm. Your family is not going well. Mm -hmm. And yet that time you take to, to serve God, mm -hmm. he's going to give you back in ways that will be so much more beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, that's really beautiful. And I, I wanted to come back to something that you said a minute ago about how we all have a purpose um, mm -hmm. in, in our life. And that, that's sort of, you know, one of the things that, that we're trying so hard to sort of discover is to find out what that purpose is and then how to, how to live it. Um, and, and you had this amazing question that, that you asked last night, which was um, the, the question that we're going to be asked is what, what have you done with what you've been given? And I, I wonder if you could just talk about a little bit how we maybe could use that question like each day day mm -hmm. to kind of help us just stay on the path, right? Stay on the path that God has yeah, put us on. That's a good question. You know, I really, I feel again, as simple as that is really all about love. Mm -hmm. I feel like wherever you are found, be loving. For example, you, a couple, you know, mm -hmm. a couple want to work together. In loving one another, you need to understand each other and not just say, I don't care what you feel. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not love when you don't care. So when that alone, making plans in ways that you're respectful to the person, you have a family together. Mm -hmm. And then when you make no plans, go and then execute, but in love. So whatever you do, the decisions you make, you know, you are a teacher in a school that have a director, you know, there is law we have to follow. Let me follow them to make easier also the work of that person, mm -hmm. you know, who's entrusted this school. And then just like in a simple way, even where we wake up in our home, sometimes we have a day off and then we are just home. You know, how can I serve those I am with? So I think like it's not even necessary to focus on so much on what is the plan mm -hmm. than just like every day you wake up and you do as it is given to you. Mm -hmm. You serve with energy. You serve with your voice. There are people who have no voice. Mm -hmm. They are mute. They can't speak. But those people, they can look at somebody and smile. Yeah. So there's a lot we can still do. You know, sometimes I don't have this, another person have. But whatever you have, if only we can focus on what we have and today. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know what is tomorrow. We don't know where we're going to wake up tomorrow. So today, to just say, who am I? I'm a daughter. I'm a son. You know, I'm a father. I'm a wife. I am a, I'm a friend. I'm a guest in somebody's home. Mm -hmm. How can I love them? Mm -hmm. You know, how can I be there just to make life easy? But use whatever you have to serve. Mm -hmm. Even if it means today I am the, supposed to be the guest who sit down, you know, mm -hmm. I can easily say like, no, 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 I need just to work. Yeah. You know? yeah. No, that's not your position today. Yeah. Your position is to appreciate and accept love and to mm -hmm. be loved and to be served. And mm -hmm. other times you're going to do the same to serve. So I think like really God is so good in giving us moment by moment just to choose love mm -hmm. and, and let the Holy Spirit help us to discover what that is, mm -hmm. you know? There's somebody who say, you know, I'm going to teach people the Bible. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that I l guide people to this beautiful book of, that speaks to them about God. And then I can have these books and then I can give them. Uh, the person is going to say, now I'm going to preach it mm -hmm. because I feel actually I need to give guidance and what is this? Mm -hmm. And another person said, I'm Catholic and I want to teach the rosary, mm -hmm. which comes back to the Bible, you know, because yeah, the rosary is yeah. really, what about the Bible, the life of our Lord. So I'm going to teach this rosary, a seventh rosary. I'm going to, to have a ministry so I can teach others how to say this prayer. So I really think that the Holy Spirit is alive. Mm -hmm. Jesus is alive. And he's guiding each one of us who say, I'm going to be useful. Mm -hmm. And then you see the plans of God being unfolded and being really happy to actually to be that part of person. Mm -hmm. You know, again, wherever you find ourselves, there will be difficulties. I have seen people like doctors who are like a surgeon. I'm like, not in my world I would ever <laughs> think about becoming a doctor. I mean, right now, if I, somebody tells me they, they're sick, like it's painful here, I start to feel pain in the same oh, place. Oh, yes. Yeah. I see somebody bleeding, I'm shaking. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, some, it's just that I, I really would take on the pain of other people mm -hmm. so quickly. So I, mean, I, I respect doctors. I will need them so much. Yeah. But you realize that. God calls people and give them the gifts, what mm -hmm. they're supposed to do. And yet, from my childhood, I share faith because I feel like if somebody only can get God, it's like I, they can change their mind and be s in such a better place. Mm -hmm. There's so much pain we can avoid by believing in God. And I always wanted to be part of, I wish I can just tell you how, you know, thinking different. Yeah you can actually be so much happier. Yeah. Why do I have that call in me that I wish to tell another person that is what God put in, put in my heart. And then you can realize that he's, 
that is needed. Mm -hmm. You know, I have met a friend who told me, like, I can never start a company. I just want to be administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. I just want to organize people, but I'm not the one to go yeah. to think, let me put these things together. And she said, I love it. I just love to organize people. You see people are thinking about creating companies. They don't have those skills necessary mm -hmm. to put things together, to organize things, to have files to be found. I'm like, wow. You know? Yeah. So you see that people have different skills. Yeah. But why? God comes in our hearts and do. But every single person, we are all useful. Mm -hmm. I remember in high school, my teacher who was a nun, she used to tell us, if you are tall, is to serve God. <laughs> it's not so that you can say, look at me, I'm telling you. <laughs> there is a reason why God gives you that height. Yeah. If you have this height, a certain is a reason why. And don't think about it too much. Just mm. follow his law. He will put you where you need to be. If you have a beautiful voice, for some reason, he will use it for him. Mm -hmm. It's not to say, if you have a certain beauty, good. You are good to look at, then God is going to use it for good. But if you follow the bad ways, the devil is yeah. going to use it, yeah. you know, to hurt God. So you have a strength, you know. I, I, I shared yesterday in, in during the retreat, I have a friend who I, we have a beautiful home. And one time I went to visit them, and then she's so ashamed. She's like, it's so big, right? No. And it's this, and like people are suffering, and, and look at me having this, and you know, with this beautiful home. I'm like, really? So God gives you such a beautiful house, mm -hmm. and what do you give back to him? is to be ashamed of it. Mm. Do you know if somebody gives you a gift and then you're ashamed of it? Yeah. No, rather use it for what is good. Mm -hmm. You know how many foundations would you love to use this place to fundraise? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. how many family members who would like to have a party to celebrate somebody's life? Yeah. You know, a birthday in this place, you really can use it to serve God, yeah. which actually she was using. I'm like, don't be ashamed, mm -hmm. you know, clean it. Oh, it's really big. You know, yeah. some people would not wish to use <laughs> to have this big home yeah. where they have three store, you know, yeah, floors. Yeah. It's a lot to clean and it's a lot of work to decorate, but she has done a beautiful job. Mm -hmm. So thank God for whatever she gives you because yeah. I might not be able to decorate this place as you did. Mm -hmm. So, and don't look at anyone who doesn't have, you know, this beautiful place yeah. like less. Just use the gift he gave you and the skills he gave you to be able to put it together. Mm -hmm. So, Wherever we are, wherever, however we are, God can use that for his purpose. Because the ending result of every person is heaven, is what we are shooting for. Because there's a paradise for everyone, and nobody is less or more in heaven. And God, if he gives you more, he's going to ask you for more. Mm -hmm. You know, he gives you less, you know, little, he will give you that. Some people in Rwanda who died during the genocide, their life were taken away at 10 years old. But what do you think God is going to ask them is the life they have lived, mm -hmm. how they have loved their parents, you know, yeah. have made easy life for their siblings, how they have hugged their parents, just loved people. That's what they were given. Oh, that's amazing. And, and I, I love that. And maybe we can kind of end on, on, a, on this question because you, you said something last night that really struck me, which was that it's very hard. I think you said it's very hard to work for a word when you don't know what that word means. And you were speaking about heaven yes. in particular. Yes. And, and sort of like just as, as we kind of come to know God through the scriptures, you were talking about reading Revelation and kind of coming to know what heaven is so that we can know what we're looking yeah. forward to. And we talk a lot um, in, in the quest about how the hope of heaven is also something that gives us courage Completely. to kind of live and in this way of love, right? Yes. So maybe we could just end on a, a, a short reflection on coming to know what heaven is so it's, that we can yes. live it. Yes, you're right. You know, I said last night, it is hard to, to work for a reward when mm -hmm. you don't know what the reward is yeah, about. Yeah. So why care so much about heaven when mm -hmm. you see all around here? Mm -hmm. But if we know in re any reasonable person have seen somebody dying, mm -hmm. so our life come to an end and we have to ask ourselves what comes after. So for us who believe in God, for us who know, believe the message of the Bible, we also know through the Bible that there will come heaven and there is hell too. Mm -hmm. So if we want to go to heaven, of course, I don't think anyone who believes in God and who loves God in any way wish ever to go to hell or anyone in the world, but you want to go to heaven. So why is it worth it to work for heaven? Mm -hmm. If you're living here now and we have all this just like we can see with our eyes, we have to know what it is about. I, I remember during that time I was hiding in the bathroom for my life. I remember thinking about that. I'm like, so what even w should give me the motivation to think about heaven? I thought about athletes. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Athletes, they work so hard. They mm -hmm. really go through a lot of pain. Yes. You know, <laughs> broken bones, mm -hmm. but they're still going. Yeah. I met somebody last week who went to ski and he literally broke this bone. Oh. And he's going back. Oh. I'm like, <laughs> why are you going back? <laughs> he's like, well, it's really fun. Yeah. But it's fun for a moment. Right. And you come to work for a career to go to live maybe one week of that fun. Mm -hmm. But heaven is eternity. So what is it that athletes, for example, when they want to win an award, they will work so hard for like how many years just so that they can win that? And the pain, mm -hmm. the, the body pain, I mean loneliness. Sometimes you wish to go have fun with your friends, mm -hmm. but you know you're going to train so that because there is this yeah. and that later. Why is it that they go through that pain? Because they know what it is that is coming. Mm -hmm. They should, they might get that award. Oh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Wow, Academy Award? Wow, or that medal? Mm -hmm. I'm going to work for it. 10 years, I will train my body, this and that. And then they give it to you, then what? <laughs> yeah, right. It's done. <laughs> Just because people say, it, wow, amazing, amazing. Yeah. Or whatever money they give you that, and maybe you spend it. But you work so hard with pain. Mm -hmm. Why is it then, as Christians, if I'm in pain, I lose my hope, I lo I'm mm -hmm. angry, I, I stop working for my heaven, it's because I don't know what it is about. Mm -hmm. So if maybe I can look in heaven to see what is written about it, that can be my motivation. And then that actually, that's what happened. I started to read in, in Revelation, I'm like, the roads in heaven are diamond and gold, there's no more pain, mm -hmm. there's no more evil, there's no more anger, no one hates you, everyone loves each other, no more, you know, this honesty, betrayer, and it's peaceful and joy for ever and ever. No more sickness, no more getting older, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. no more I'm hungry. I'm like, wow, you know, it looks beautiful and it feels beautiful. Yeah. Okay, how long? Maybe it's short. That's why maybe we don't put much <laughs> attention. No, no, it's really long. <laughs> I literally remember taking a pen. I say, let me draw what is heaven looks like, how long it is in that beauty. I go like this. It doesn't end. Eternity is forever and ever, billions and zillions of years. And then I'm like, okay, let me compare to a hundred years. Yeah. This becomes like a little dot on a map compared to eternity. Mm -hmm. This becomes like a, a blink in a lifetime compared to eternity. So why is it that I care so much about this? Mm -hmm. If I know what heaven is about mm -hmm. and how big and how long it is. And again, without fail, all of us will die. So no one is going to choose. Like Maybe I should stay here forever. Right. You know, this <laughs> is, we're going no matter what. So when I saw how beautiful that was, and again, reading through the Bible, choosing to believe in God for sure and learning Him and coming to love Him with, again, lo learning His personality. The more I read about heaven, I was like, I can take whatever comes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever yeah. I go through this world. I mean, I was being, they were searching for us. We were hearing our family member being killed, but that gave me so much joy. Mm -hmm. Just to know, if they die, they're not disappearing. Mm -hmm. There is a place they're going to. Thank God my family loved God. Thank God my family prayed. Thank God they believed in heaven. Now I need to work on my part. Yeah. So that was more about what was exciting me. So I, I, yeah, I think everyone should really find out about God, especially for us Christians, we need to read about heaven mm -hmm. in the Bible, but also there are also some near death experiences mm -hmm. that are actually of people who have seen heaven, who have gone through them. One I will give an example really worth looking for is an experience of somebody called Howard, Howard Storm, storm like a storm, mm -hmm. a storm like a hurricane, yeah, 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 like a storm. Yeah. Howard Storm, slowly he lost his faith, but people were praying for him, and then he died. He was tortured by demons, wow. and then he called upon Jesus because he remembered when he was a child, and then Jesus came and picked him up and went and hugged him and loved him. And after that, showed him all his life where he went wrong mm -hmm. and sent him back. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, one experience, mm -hmm. he came back, he was mm -hmm. a good Christian. So when you learn about heaven, oh, he tells me, I live here because I don't have a choice. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I would wish to go back mm -hmm. and see him because it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. So we want to work for heaven. And of course, we're human beings. Sometimes we fall, you know, but also Jesus told us, ask for forgiveness. He redeemed us. Mm -hmm. If only we can humble ourselves and ask forgiveness, He will forgive us and we become new again. How good that is. Yeah. So I just want to encourage everybody, please look at heaven. Because if you really know what it is, if you get to know Jesus, His love, 
you can't help but love him mm-hmm. and want to work for that place. That's beautiful. And that I, I, I can't think of a, a better way to end than on that. So thank you so very much for your thank time you. and thank for you. sharing your, your beautiful reflections on the life of faith with us. Thank, thank you. you.